Good to see you. Oh, aren't you? Oh, it's a while. It's day five, and Mary has arranged to introduce Chris to Peter Curry. Peter is a security guard and a devoted family man with a remarkable story to tell about an alien encounter that he claims left him with the Holy Grail, DNA evidence. No, what, what happened in 1992 was um, something you don't expect. And I've never had an experience or heard of experiences that have happened during the day. And this is 7.15 in the morning. I'm lying there and I feel like something jumped on the bed like a cat. As I sit up, I see sitting straddling me a naked blonde female and sitting on the corner of the bed. So say I'm lying here on the bed, she's straddling me there and right on the corner here is another female. The one that was sitting on top of me was um, blonde, very milky white skin, very, very attractive, but at the same time, a longer face, a long nose, but it wasn't a big nose again, it was just like it, it fitted their features very well. Larger eyes, very well proportioned, I mean, I've got to say. And um, I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? How did, you know, how did you get in here? And um, as I'm thinking this, I sit up, and as I sit up, she's cupped my, the back of my head with both her hands and pulled me to her breast, left breast, and pushed my face into it. My defence mechanism, whatever you want to call it, and it's so out of thing with me, I took an, a little bite, a nip, and I felt flesh, you know, in my mouth. I didn't taste blood or anything, but I felt this bit of flesh in my mouth. I thought it was a bit of a nipple, maybe. And as it hit the back of my throat, I just, it was like you poured acid down the back of my throat, just this really bad chemical reaction. I started coughing, very heavy coughing, and as I've looked down and coughed, I've looked up and I saw them looking at each other and I picked up what they were saying. They weren't speaking, but it was telepathic communication again. It was, he's done this wrong, something's gone wrong, this isn't the way it's supposed to be, he's done this wrong. And I'm like, what the heck, what are, what are you going on? I could pick on, I could hear it. I had an erection for like six hours afterwards and it was pretty painful. And under my foreskin, I found two hairs. Um, one was like an S shape, almost curled, and the other one was sort of not, uh, it was just wrapped around, um, embedded in though, like it, it, if you push your nail into you, you get a little bit of a mark. That's what they were in, they were embedded. I could see that they, were, they weren't on the surface. And as I tried to take them off, peel them off, it was total agony. And uh, so I knew had to be from them. Peter released his sample for DNA analysis, which was conducted by a biochemist. The results that came back were extremely unusual. And mate, I was bombarded with phone calls from the scientists, come to our house, took hair samples from me, hair samples from Vivian, blood from me. So it was starting to get like a forensic investigation. What they found was, The analysis confirmed the hair came from someone who was biologically close to normal human genetics, but of an unusual racial type, a rare Chinese mongoloid type, one of the rarest human lineages known, that lies further from the human mainstream than any other, except for African pygmies and aborigines. There was a strange anomaly of it being blonde to clear instead of black, as it would be expected from the Asian type mitochondrial DNA. The study concluded the most probable donor Therefore, must be, as Curry claims, a tall blonde female who uh, does not need much colour in her hair or skin as a form of protection against the sun, perhaps because she doesn't require it. And Peter, thank you. Ah, thank you, Mary. You know, we're always here for each other. Yeah. That's what we've got to do. That's right. Always. Yeah. Ah, you did some good work. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. It was a very, very believable, credible guy that works on construction sites and has now, you know, dedicated a large part of his life to kind of, uh, to telling his story. Do I think he's doing it for any kind of reason other than the fact that he feels compelled to do it? No, I don't. Chris has decided he needs to talk to Peter Curry again. 
Hello. Hello. Hello, Peter. Big man. G'day, it's Chris Rodwell. How are you going? Your account yesterday was was pretty mind blowing and 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 quite um, quite detailed. Um, look, I was wondering whether or not uh, you would be prepared to to undergo a polygraph test. Oh, not a problem. I've always requested it, mate. I've, I even uh, at one stage um, asked Bill there was some talk of some truth serum that was uh, being used in some military stuff, and I said, mate, I'd be more than happy to do that as well. Okay, gr great. Cheers, Pete. Cheers, sir. Bye. Bye, mate. It makes it much more believable to me, the fact he was so eager to do the polygraph test. I mean, how, how can it not? There's a guy saying, without a hesitation, without a shadow of a doubt, yep, I'll do it. What, what can you, you go, okay, well, right, right, right. That wasn't, I was expecting even a port, like a, a thought. Nah, do it. Whilst the polygraph test is conducted, the room must be cleared. So Mary and Chris have to wait outside until Gavin is finished. It's going to be fascinating. He wants to get an answer and he really is, is very interested in, in doing it. So that's going, to be, uh, that's going to be a fitting finale, I think, really. If he passes that, what can you say? Yeah. These things, they just record how you're going to breathe yeah. during the test. So just raise your arms up again. This one's going to go up and round your thoracic area. Mm -hmm. All right, just drop your arms down. Yeah. Those sensors on your fingertips, they record perspiration, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. If you're feeling faint, if you're feeling uneasy, queasy, whatever, yeah, let, let us know if you do. Yeah. Uh, okay, Peter, the test is about to begin. They're going to get you to close your eyes for me. Keep your feet flat on the floor, don't move, and answer each test question truthfully. Is today Wednesday? Yes. Is your first name Peter? Yes. Do you intend to deliberately lie to any test question? No. In July 1988, did you definitely witness five aliens in your bedroom at your parents' home in Hilston Park? Yes. Did you lie to me when you said you definitely witnessed five aliens in your bedroom at your parents' home in Hurlston Park? No. Is honesty more important to you than loyalty? Yes. Did you deliberately do anything to try and beat this test? No. Did you lie to me when you said you definitely witnessed five aliens in your bedroom at your parents' home in Hurlston Park? No. Okay, the test is now over. Just Chris, Mary, I suppose you're dying to know what the results were. Um, Peter uh, passed the test. Great. I'm happy. So as far as I'm concerned, what he witnessed, there has to be some merit in that. The polygraph test has validated Peter's account of the events and reinforced his belief that the scientific community need to take this matter seriously. Look, I think the DNA went a long way to helping people believe. Um, hopefully with a polygraph to back it, people can then sit back and say, well, if the guy's not lying, there's got to be something there, you know, and if there's something there, and if it's 5% of all the reports around the world, if 5% of those reports are legitimate, and mine is part of that, then, geez, we've got a phenomena we need to look at. I mean, the results actually haven't surprised me, because I've always believed Peter, and I know that he's got absolutely nothing to gain by saying something so incredible. It was an amazing day to, to cap off an amazing kind of time. Um, and, you know, I guess, I guess I keep coming back to the fact that, you know, the only, after having looked at everything, the only certainty is that there's still uncertainty. 
And the more questions you ask, the more you find.